Hello my friends, my name is Dr. Saeed Kazmi and you're watching my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about BRUE which is commonly known as BRUE which stands for Briefly Resolve Unexplained Event which is a very um, frightening sort of a clinical presentation in uh, infants and um, that usually scares the parents. So without further ado, let's dive in and get started. So BRUE or BRUE, Brief Resolve Unexplained Event. So what does it mean? Brief means that it's always short. It like, you know, lasts less than a minute. So it's always less than a minute. That means it's brief. Resolve means by the time you see these patients, they are, everything is normal. So it was a short last, short like, you know, uh, lasting event which has resolved on its own. So by the time you see them, it's always resolved. That's the R stands for. Unexplained means it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Usually you have excluded other causes and there is nothing like a sepsis or underlying infection or gastroesophageal reflux which is responsible for this event. And the fourth E stand event, even means that there should be certain things. So there is a clinical presentation and that clinical presentation might include one of these following. So either there is central cyanosis or pallor. So the parents report that the child for less than a minute, he underwent central cyanosis or pallor or there was absent or irregular sort of breathing or there might be change in tone of the muscle that the baby went floppy or they might have what we call as altered level of consciousness where uh, they were probably unresponsive for a few seconds. So if any one of these things which is classified as an event is uh, was there and it resolved on its own, lasted less than a minute, then we call it briefly resolve unexplained event. Now remember the child always has to be less than a year. Remember BRUI is not a diagnosis for children more than one year of age. This is a diagnosis which is exclusive to children less than one year of age. Now it is also important that you classify if you get along um, a case where the presentation is of BRUI, you have to first of all classify whether this is a low risk event or a high risk event. Now what is a low risk event? A low risk event is where the, the child is otherwise very well on the examination, there are no red flags and you think that the recurrence is very unlikely. A high risk child means where the red flags are present and in a moment I will go through those what are those red flags or well, it's a it's a sort of a presentation which has resolved but requires further investigations now coming down to the red flags so if the red flags are present you would always classify it as high risk so what are those red flags remember red flags can be any of the following so if you are dealing with a young child young child means somebody who is less than 60 days of age less than two months of age so that is always a red flag so remember of any presentation no matter how well the child looks if he's less than 60 days of age that is always a red flag if the event lasted for greater than one minute obviously the definition brui is a definition where you know the event lasted for less than one minute but if it is uh, it was an event which lasted for more than a minute then that is also a red flag if the child is unwell i mean on examination you find that the child is not very well that is also a red flag or there is a history of prematurity that baby was born before 37 weeks of uh, pregnancy or there's been a history of sudden cardiac death in the family or there's been a history of uh, breathing problems like uh, was a uh, recently recovered from bronchiolitis under the respiratory infection or if you've got social concern that the parents might not, might not be able to cope uh, with any recurrence at home or if there was this you know this event required a CPR. So if the parents say like you know, the baby went floppy, was unresponsive, they had to do CPR, maybe one or two, you know, like of chest compressions or something like that, then that is also a red flag. And if there is anything, if you find something on the examination which is abnormal, then that also is a red flag. So any one of these things that if that is present, that would classify as a red flag. So remember all these brewery uh, cases that you see in your clinics or in the emergency departments, once you make sure it's breathe then the second thing is you have to classify whether it's low risk or whether it's high risk because high risks are the kids who need to be kept in and probably would do some investigation now there are a few things that might pre, you know which are which are on the differential diagnosis of brui because when we say brui 
it's a briefly resolved unexplained unit so usually you don't get sort of any explanation for that but if there is an underlying explanation or if there is a cause for them then it's not brewy it's one of those differential diagnoses so remember it could be airway obstruction because of secretions it might be letting you spasm before of because maybe the child has aspirated something it's gone into his airways or it could be gastroesophageal reflux which again is quite common in babies or it might be uh, apnea of prematurity so baby who has been premature and you know because of prematurity they can have apneic spell so for that is also a differential diagnosis for brie or if there is a presence of congenital heart disease like they've got vst ast or cyanotic congenital heart disease or if they had underlying arrhythmias which you pick up on the ecg some of the other differential diagnoses hypoglycemia remember hypoglycemia can present as brie again you have to look uh, through the uh, heel prick uh, blood glucose or you can simply do a cap gas and that would also give you uh, the glucose levels uh, look for under, under, any underlying infection like sepsis or any other like uh, sort of uh, localized infections like bronchiolitis, uh, lower respiratory tract infections. Remember some seizures can also present as unresponsiveness. So uh, seizures should also be on the differential diagnosis. Some of the metabolic problems like inborn error of metabolism that can also present with, uh, with something similar like pre. And last but not the least, sometimes remember if um, history seems dodgy, and the parents seem to be like you know coming from the low socioeconomic backgrounds or they are on the child uh, what you call not known to the social services then you should be thinking of uh, non-accidental injury as well rarely it can present that way as well so the presentation usually you have to ask when you're taking the history you ask about the event like what happened and uh, especially how long it went what was the particular sequence of uh, events that happened what happened before that what happened after that uh, whether any resuscitative measures were used like for example any mouth to mouth breathing was done or any cpr was done you also ask about history of prematurity uh, any sort of uh, you know or the um, resuscitative measure that were taken at the time of birth or if the child had an ex like kind of stay in the uh, intensive care after birth history of prolonged jaundice and uh, things like that you also ask about family history of seizures family history of uh, certain cardiac death things like that and also about the social history who lives with the child who is there in the home uh, stepdad things like that okay so you have to take this history because that would give you an idea whether there is an underlying cause for you know which can actually point towards a differential diagnosis or whether you are going towards like an unexplained uh, even which we call as brie so remember as far as a physical examination remember your physical examination for this diagnosis of brie should be absolutely normal so everything should be fine your head to toe examination you have to do especially look for any signs of nai listen to the chest for any crackles uh, do um cap gas um, or check blood glucose levels and remember all of your examination from head to toe should be normal in order to classify it as a brewery uh, then there are a few things that you should uh, be doing you should not be doing you may do things like that so remember what you should always do is educate caregivers so that in case if uh, recurrence occur how to deal with that so at least they are um, well versed with how to do cpr in case if the need arises so cpr training for the parents is one thing that you should tell them how to do that if they don't know it already what you should not do like and i'm talking especially talking about low risk uh, brewery in a low risk brewery remember do not do any investigation so do not do any lab work like uh, lumbar puncture uh, blood cultures chest x-ray uh, urinary cultures remember or like you know advising uh, home cardiorespiratory monitoring or putting them on um, any sort of acid suppression drugs like you know giving them omeprazole or caviscon anything like that yes what you may consider sometimes some doctors uh, they can do that you can do a 12 lead ecg uh, you can do uh, cap gas cap gas would give you a idea about what's going on and how is the acid base uh, balance so uh, or you might do a few like you know sort of routine observations for an hour or two in the emergency department that's you you may do if you want to in case of low risk what you need not to do is like don't do any respiratory panels so don't take like any swabs from the throat or like checking them for this and that there's no need of doing neuroimaging and there is no need of admitting these children to the uh, hospital for extensive period of time 
So this was all about Brie. Remember, brief, resolve, unexplained uh, event. And um, brief, resolve, unexplained means that it is an unexplained event which resolves uh, by itself and it should be lasting less than one minute. And always you should classify into low risk and high risk. High risk would need further investigations, observations, as depending on your exam findings. Low risk, remember, you need to educate the parents how to deal with any case of recurrence. Um, and uh, maybe you can do a cap gas and uh, you can tell them home and give them the safety netting that in case if this happens in uh, if there is a repetition then what to do in that particular case and when to bring the child back so hopefully you have liked this uh, small lecture on briefly resolve unexplained event if there are further questions which are there in your mind put it down in the comment section below and i will be more than happy to answer them have a very good day take care and bye bye